guys. I want to welcome everybody back to the Independent Investor Channel. We're going to jump in and do a review of the self-directed Roth IRA account number two. Uh, this is uh, one of six major accounts that I have uh, in the total comprehensive portfolio. The whole idea here is to tax protect dollars and wealth preserve them going forward. Those two aspects are really the root and the backbone of the Independent Investor Channel. Uh, if we're not doing those two things, we're missing out over time. It's just that simple. So if you're really here in the niche of my message, it's to understand the power of a liber liberated dollar into the future, free of fees and liberated to grow uh, to potential of your dollars. Super, super important to understand that point and takeaway from my message. Without further ado, we'll jump in and we'll conduct the review. I'd like to welcome everybody into the Roth IRA number two. This is going to be to chronicle the holdings in my account. This is um, this is the one that I've had, uh, oh, just going on about 15 or 16 years now anyway. And, um, you know, it, it's evolved over time. A lot of, lot of uh, trading action in here, a lot of investing action, uh, a lot of the uh, everything of the above in this. <laughs> it's really evolved over time. There's no doubt a few cornerstones in here that I insist upon owning just straight through. Johnson & Johnson sticks out on the list here. But uh, um, we, we're owning a big position here in Apple Computers on the top end to take up some technology space. Um, next on the list is AbbVie in the healthcare space. Uh, Alibaba uh, out of discretionary uh, here, a 15 share position. I've already swung trade that a uh, couple times this year. Uh, been profitable every single time and thought it was a nice re-entry here um, in Alibaba. Citigroup I've owned for a long, long time. Uh, it's obviously uh, increased in value. We had it in some real deep water here in the low 40s. <clears throat> Fought all the way back and it's nice to see that the company is, is up just a dab 7% with just over 51 shares. Uh, Salesforce, we just took an up in Salesforce of 10 shares. So we added again to that position. Glad to do so. I think over the next five years, the Salesforce.com position is really going to become very valuable in the portfolio. And right below that, uh, a space that gives me some exposure in online security is CrowdStrike, which I think is the best in breed. Um, the best in what they do uh, in the on online security space, a 15 share position, uh, relatively small, comparatively speaking, uh, maybe a, a point and a half a percentage to the total overall portfolio value. But uh, in the large uh, large growth space technology, it's, it's a good holding. Technology is a very tricky, tricky uh, sector for me to fill. Uh, and CrowdStrike and, and, and Salesforce uh, help uh, fill out some of those areas, uh, both in the cloud and, and in um, uh, uh, cloud cybersecurity, actually. So somewhat related there, um, but, um, but uh, kind of the emergence of where things are going uh, with technology. And right below that in the telecom space, we've got Google at three shares. Nice big position in the uh, online search giant um, really difficult to own discretionary without owning this fine name. Um, then right below it, we've got Hylion Holdings as well in the industrial space. Uh, just about 2,200 shares there um, that we're working with. Uh, IBM right below that in old tech has really kind of caught some fire, came off a nice quarter um, and has run up into a little bit more of a respectable territory. IBM has just been kind of a dog over the last five years. Um, but I like it for the dividend, and the and I like what they're what they're doing here with their um, um, with their smart smart cloud technology, and and just acquiring Red Hat a couple years ago, which is a good acquisition uh, for them um, with their legacy businesses, and 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 now their smart cloud technology or the hybrid cloud technology, very good stuff. I'm glad to own IBM here, I'm just shy of four thousand and twenty six shares. Uh, social capital, we need to get that through SPAC merger. We'll convert those warrants over and uh, we'll hold 400 shares uh, here in this portfolio and um, own them in both Roths. Obviously, those are the two SPAC positions. Obviously, bullish on both. Um, getting punished in the short term, but uh, hopefully medium to the long term is really going to pay off long. Um, as as I, I look at those as having some real 
real uh, long-term uh, growth prospects uh, into the future and really look to embolden the portfolio with those two holdings with some nice capital growth uh, prospects. J&J &J is the cornerstone, probably my absolute favorite. I mean, it really is one of my absolute favorite stocks to own. Almost a $10,000 bill. We've upped that position, 20 more shares. Um, easy justification uh, to take up the lion's share of the healthcare sector. It is my largest of the healthcare holdings, J&J. &J. Couldn't ask for a better performance. A company dividend payer at 3% fantastic we'll continue to own this and uh and um it's one that i i look at i monitor but i i don't um i don't mess with it uh, if i was going to do anything with johnson and johnson i would just continue to add to it going forward uh kimberly clark uh, came off a tough one it's um been up and down um, but uh, nonetheless very very happy to own kimberly clark we monitored it for many many years insisted upon owning procter and gamble exclusively um, but we've split those two since then, and, and to get myself some staples exposure, Kimberly Clark and right below it, Coca-Cola, right? So they complement each other, Pepsi and Coke, Kimberly Clark and Procter and & Gamble. I own all four. Uh, I don't uh, discriminate between them. They're all great companies in their own right, and might as well just own them all. Uh, McDonald's in the discretionary space has uh, just uh, done well. Uh, it came off a really just an on-fire quarter, just shy of 5000 just over 20 shares, rather large position, second largest holding and discretionary for me, uh, right behind Amazon. So this is a big one, um, up 17%. We're good with McDonald's. We'll just continue to own it. It's one of those top 10 companies, Dow component that I think you can just buy and own forever. Uh, we're good to go. Merck, another Dow component here. Um, healthcare's come off. This is w one of the names that I've been rather disappointed on from a value proposition it's undervalued uh, however just out of favor right now and that happens we'll continue to sit on the dividend and uh, we'll live to fight a, another day and look to the horizon for Merck uh, big oil here on the bottom of Royal Dutch Shell and Exxon Mobil respectively um, it just oil can't get out of its own way it's just just absolutely terrible um, the, the Exxon Mobil position I will say we were down 50 percent in that so to be down 15% right now and to have that uh, ExxonMobil position looking at a $6,500 bill um, just speaks on how um, persistent I've been, how patient I've been, and uh, how bullish I am on um, the big oil companies, uh, uh, especially Chevron, Royal Dutch, and, and Exxon. I, I have the biggest positions in these. I do round out the portfolio using M1 Finance in the energy space with Valero, Marathon Petroleum, Enbridge, right? Some other names like that. Total Energy, I'm very bullish on that I own in the other ConocoPhillips, uh, Phillips 66. Uh, so one of my favorite sectors, it always has been, uh, I don't know why, it punish me, punishes me to invest in it. However, it does pay a nice dividend on, on all of them. And, uh, you know, you've got to fill out the energy sector. I'm kind of right on the money. I'm a little overweight in energy right now, um, basically because of that ExxonMobil kind of running away from me a touch. Uh, which is totally fine. We'll continue to monitor that position. And, um, you know, it's it's uh, kind of fighting back some really good value there um, in big oil. And then finally, Raytheon Technology there, the RTX position in industrials, uh, relatively small, $2,500, 30-share position. Uh, love Raytheon. Raytheon's uh, just won a huge contract with Lockheed Martin. Uh, defense, I really enjoy. I own Northrop Grumman and General Dynamics and the other uh, portfolio industrial sector. I own Raytheon in the other portfolio too, one of the very rare um, uh, opportunities that I take to double up on a position. I'm that bullish on it. I, I, Raytheon's one of my favorites. Um, the only one that I don't own is L3 Harris that I cover, uh, but but I don't currently own. And Huntington Ingalls really being the, the, the five um, that, that I kind of cover in the defense space. I always keep my eye on it, but I do have my faves um, and I'm invested uh, in, in those respectively, okay? So with that, that kind of concludes the, the review of the Roth IRA number two. Uh, hope you guys enjoyed the review. I don't roll these out very often, but when I do, 
Um, this is a, an opportunity for you to jump into a real portfolio. This thing is alive and well. Um, some are up, some are down, but this is what this is investing uh, 406 right here. This is this is in the trenches investing, and glad to share it with you guys and the subscriber base. And uh, with that, we'll kick you back and we'll conclude the video. All right, guys. So we've come out of the Roth IRA account number two. Um, this is a, an account that kind of started it all for me. Um, this was the account that was started with fifteen hundred dollars. Um, just seems like yesterday. It's just amazing how wealth grows. It's amazing how if you mentally put yourself on a plan, how you can get there. You really can. A lot of this is mental. And, um, you know, it just it just takes that little bit of motivation to start. And hopefully we can provide um, that little spark for you. And sometimes that's what people need is just a little bit of inspiration to say, you know what, uh, if this guy can do it, I can do it too. And you absolutely can. So if you appreciate the motivational uh, angle to my message and to make sure and subscribe to the channel and leave your comments at the bottom, share the message with anybody out there that's looking for some introductory information on the stock market, what it means to be a self-directed investor, what it means to be an empowered investor. Bring them on the channel. We'd be glad to have them. We're building a community of self-directed investors and uh, all is welcome. It's, it's great. The initiative is, is very, very positive and your success is, is really indicative of the channel's success. So appreciate you guys tuning into the message. Good luck in your investment future.